Repentance is one of those words that a lot of people in our modern day society don't really like. It conjures up feelings of um, perhaps sin and guilt, other words that people don't like. This idea that we've gone wrong and that we need to return to God. And so modern spirituality tells us that we really haven't done anything wrong. And so the whole idea of guilt, wrongdoing, moral wrongdoing, sin, have completely gone out of the window. That's not actually part of modern day spirituality at all. But of course, within Christianity, what we see time and time again is the need for people to return to God, to turn from the way they have been going because they've been making a lot of mistakes, they've been hurting themselves and other people, their whole lives are falling, are falling apart. And so the idea is we turn, we repent, we acknowledge our wrongdoing, we acknowledge the fact that we've gone our own way and not listened to God, we've got out of alignment, we've got out of step with God. We're supposed to be walking in step with God. We're supposed to be following him, not rushing ahead and rushing off and doing whatever we feel like we want to do at the time. And so repentance is really the linchpin of this relationship with God because it puts us in right standing. It puts us in this place of humility and honesty, really, because which one of us can say that we've done nothing wrong? I think a lot of people today would like to say that. We like to think of ourselves as very good and decent people who haven't done anything wrong because, of course, morals are now subjective and we can do whatever we want, basically, without offending God because a lot of people don't believe in God. But if we come from the starting point of, yes, we do have a creator who created the universe, who created us, who created the universe and us to be a certain way, Okay, there are certain rules of nature that make things run smoothly and there are certain rules of behaviour that make our lives better and that make the whole world better if we would just follow them. And I think this is an idea that we need to kind of come back to. This idea that we can all just go our own way and everything's going to be fine. Well, I think if we just look around us, we can see the kind of chaos that that kind of idea breeds. And so if we do have a creator... And this creator has designed us for a purpose to work in a specific way. And we know when we've gone wrong because we have a conscience, hopefully switched on for most of us, where we do start to feel uneasy. We do start to feel guilt for what we've done. We do start to feel shame if we've hurt other people. And these feelings that we don't want to feel anymore these days are prompting us to return to God are prompting us to stop and think, okay, hang on a minute, this doesn't feel right, okay, I shouldn't have snapped at that person, I shouldn't have stolen that thing, I shouldn't have looked at that person with lust, whatever it is, I shouldn't have done that, that doesn't feel good, and I need to turn back to God, acknowledge what I've done, acknowledge my moral wrongdoing, and ask for forgiveness, and that puts us in the right place, it puts us in a place of humility, instead of what most people want to be in, a state of pride which says I can do what I want and no one's going to tell me what to do and I certainly don't need to stop and turn and pray for forgiveness, okay? But of course we do need to do that. It's the linchpin. It's the linchpin of our relationship with God but it's also the linchpin of transformation. Transformation. This is what people say they want these days. They want to be transformed. They want to be changed. They want to reach their full potential is another way that people say that. We do not change, we do not transform if we cannot admit our wrongdoing. You will all know people in your life who never take responsibility for anything. Now, we're all very good at justifying our behaviour, okay? When we're caught out in a lie or doing something wrong, we don't like to admit that we've done something wrong, but most of us will, even if it's reluctantly. Most of us will apologise if we've hurt other people. Most of us will try and do better next time, but there are some people who never, never admit that they've done anything wrong. You'll see this a lot with politicians, for example. And when you never admit that you've done anything wrong, what's happening? It means that you are in stasis. You're stagnant. You're stuck. And so the linchpin of transformation, of change, is repentance, of turning, of acknowledging what you've done wrong, and in acknowledging that thing, doing differently next time. That's what helps you transform. And so we don't want to be 
like The Walking Dead, just zombies walking around, pretending that we are perfect people and that we don't need to ask for forgiveness, that we don't need to be humble, that we don't need to change our ways. We want to have a relationship with our creator and we want to fall in line and in step with his will for our life. And of course, once we're in right alignment with God, it's more likely that he's going to listen to our prayers, isn't it? So often throughout the Bible, God is saying through the prophets, please listen to me, I'm talking to you. Please turn from your ways. You can't hear what I'm saying. Turn back to me. I'm speaking, I'm speaking. And they ignore him because they want to go their own way. And so we don't want to be like that. We want to have a relationship with God where he is open to hearing our prayers and he's going to be way more open if we get ourselves in the right position. If we say, please cleanse me and heal me, Lord, please cleanse me so that you can accept my prayers so that you can hear and also cleanse me so that I can hear what you're saying to me. There's so many people out there saying that they want to hear from God, but they can't hear from God. Their prayers aren't being answered. And I think part of the reason is often that they don't go through this repentance process. 